Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you today. Um, so from the animal science perspective, um, animal production and animal products contribute to the U.S. economy significantly. They are the livelihoods for a lot of uh, low income and uh, resource poor citizens around the world. But primarily they're an important part of the issue of global food security, providing adequate food. And so in terms of this, around the world the demand for animal products is projected to increase in line with population growth, urbanization, uh, increased incomes, people seek more animal-based food as, they, as their income seems to rise, and so there's a demand. But with this demand comes the issue of sustainable animal production. Sustainable in terms of protecting the well-being of animals, animal health. Sustainable in terms of public health issues, where those diseases that affect animals also affect man. Uh, residues uh, that are in, in the drugs that we uh, provide for animals uh, are of concern for human consumption. And also this issue of antibiotic and anti-helminthic resistance that is sort of uh, leading us to concerns about uh, long-term public health. So zoonotic diseases are not the only source of, source of concern, as veterinarians would, would uh, also explain to us. But besides infectious diseases, the way that we manage animal uh, production and animal health also impacts human health. So there are concerns. In addition to these facts, animal production is associated with environmental impacts. And a lot of you might be aware about the concerns around livestock production, methane emissions, climate change mitigation, and the carbon footprint. But in addition to consumers being very aware and concerned about um, animal production, producers are also very concerned. I work with dairy farmers and dairy farming groups that are concerned about sustainable production, not only because of the concern for animal welfare, but also because it impacts the bottom line, where places like Walmart and other organizations are concerned about sustainable production purposes. And so the dairy industry and animal industry is also concerned about environmental impacts. In addition to all of these facts, limited resources in terms of us competing among ourselves with the growing need to produce more food and to have more animals uh, also has an, uh, implications for how we produce our animals and whether we will produce more animals uh, or um, animal products. So the issue of producing more food with limited resources and what kind of technology are we gonna use? And is that technology something that uh, will bring more debate into food production or will require us to uh, form collaborative areas with those people in technology and those people who are not just in biotechnology but engineering and computational sciences and digital systems, apps, and what have you for animal production, those also bring new avenues for collaboration that are revolutionizing agriculture and animal production in general. Plug in or find another, are you getting the same message? Just to plug in or find another part. Yes, Nothing's advancing. And nothing's advancing. Is it advancing where you are? Oh, very yeah. oh, okay, good. So maybe I'll come down there. Um, so in terms of animal agriculture, I can't really see what's going on. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Billy is here. I can't see. Billy just finished. Oh, very good. I don't know what count against me. There you go. So, in terms of sustainable production, the FAO, uh, United Nations, um, have come up with their sustainable development goals. And within the 17 sustainable de development goals for the United Nations, the Livestock Center ties in with every single goal. Every single goal could be a concern, but it's also an opportunity because this means that this system. The livestock production system allows us avenues by which we can improve and come up with sustainable practices. In particular, with the idea of zero hunger, 
environmental sustainability, livestock play a key role. And this is an opportunity to partner with people in soil sciences and plant sciences and human health to affect sustainable animal production. The soil, of course, is part of what makes us who we are. It's part of what makes our animals who they are. But in turn, we and our animals also contribute to sustainable soil systems and the utility of the soil for our livelihoods. So this understanding where the soil, I hope you're seeing something I'm not, the soil will impact not only our livelihoods and the livelihoods of our animals, but it will also impact the uh, way that we can use animal production systems to improve soil ecosystems through, my, through either dietary interventions, management interventions, and interventions on animal health is a, an avenue for partnership among us. Um, we have already heard a reference to One Health. One Health is, I think, a theme that although developed by veterinarians, uh, in the avenue of where we're talking about soil, human, and animal health, it really expands this opportunity for our thinking along the, the, the realms of planetary health that we talked about earlier. But there are issues in animal production that animal scientists have come together and they've decided that there are areas of focus. In each of these areas of focus, what is lacking to me at, at present is this inclusion of soil health. And having this opportunity to interact with a group like this and a pre at the previous meeting as well, I think that focus clearly needs to be incorporated into all of these possible areas that we've identified under the Society of Animal Science, where the soil underlines all of our opportunities to impact animal health, in particular in the realms of micronutrients that we've heard about, same as in plants, pathogens, soil-borne pathogens. I work with parasites and I work with um, environmental microbes that cause a lot of disease in animals. So these are tightly linked to what comes from the soil, but also the animals that I treat with alternative systems of treatment also impact soil biodiversity and soil micronutrients. In terms of collaborations, in, and I won't go through all of these, but I really think that we also, as this group, as the poll indicated, there's a lot of universities involved here. There's an opportunity for training and developing unique programs that will mean that in the future, when we have such a group, we will have those scientists that have been trained to look at these issues in, in a perspective that comes from diverse disciplines and not necessarily from our own silos. So I think there is a need for training there's a need for communication, definitely, in communication. Not only is, does it mean that we have to go and present, but if we could also engage our extension personnel and get them involved in meetings such as this, and also get them to share our uh, scientific um, output, I think these things will help in the process of understanding what context we're talking about when we're talking about soil health and the interrelatedness of sustainable practices. <clears throat> um, I like this uh, particular um, complicated but interwoven uh, figure. It comes from a group, uh, Fiona Walsh's group, but it, it comes, uh, and I wish I could, <laughs> I could have done it myself, but it does give us a perspective of the internet relatedness and the role of livestock. Livestock are not the only contributors to environmental issues. They are not the only contributors to food production, but the way that we produce food, the genetics that is in our livestock, the genetics that is in soil through the microbiome, the genetics that's in plants is interwoven and it can be connected to our own well-being, human well-being. Human well-being does not necessarily mean that we are um, just consuming food, but we are also sharing the genes that flow through our biological systems. And so as we understand soil health, 
do we understand the, the connection to the microbiome, the organisms that are flowing through the soil, through livestock, through man and plants? Do we understand the kinds of microbes or the genes that are in the microbes? Is it just that there are microbes that are flowing through, through us, or are there genes that are passing through? And if it's just the microbes, is it really a health problem? Or should we look at what genes are truly passing through our environments? Also, through the food processing industry, what are we doing? And what are the, the strategies that are helping us reduce or promote or somehow contribute to this flow of um, things that might impact our health? Not just the genetics, but the nutrients also. Uh, we heard about iron, and, and uh, uh, I would like to say that in us, in anim for us in animal health, copper is a big problem. Copper, with regards to parasite resistance and parasite, uh, controlling parasites, soil-borne parasites, is an issue in sheep. And when we look at things that uh, have been uh, reported in Australia, uh, in the US, Ireland, regarding copper deficiency, and also copper toxicity on the other extreme, balancing the amount of nutrients that are available to man impacts food security. So there are small issues that we can touch upon in within this realm, I'd like to also mention that antibiotic resistance, uh, antimicrobial agents, all of these are a problem. But the way we are addressing the problem could be a solution as well. So I work with probiotics for animal health. I work with looking at polyphenols as a way of uh, contributing to animal health. In both instances, these have potential implications for soil health the amount of uh, probiotics that are retained in animals, the, uh, what is being passed back into the soil. These are things that I don't necessarily have the opportunity to look at myself, but a way that I could um, interact or collaborate with people in this room or elsewhere. In addition, the use of polyphenols in our diets, in human health, animal health, has implications for soil health. And so there are studies that are showing that we could use polyphenol teas for our cattle, but in turn, those polyphenols pass through the cattle into the soil and may help mitigate problems in the soil. At this point, uh, I shall stop. There are <laughs> lots of funding agencies, and this lady knows more about them than I do. Thank you, Millie. <laughs>